Hi. Uh, timeline? February 11th? Um, I've been, I've been really sitting <laughs> with this concept of our dark side. The dark side. I've been watching The Mandalorian <laughs> to try to catch up. And you know, with Star Wars, there's the dark side, right? And, and you know, we look at movies, there's dark side. <laughs> the evil and the good good versus bad good versus evil it's always versus right this this duality exists even in movies um but just wanting to talk about it a little bit more you know and, and you know we attribute dark side sometimes to like secrets you know i think i i did a, a video on skeletons in my closet um and, and really just sitting with okay why are we afraid of our dark side like why are people in denial of wanting to admit that we have a dark side or or wanting to tap into that part of ourselves, our shadow side right like what 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 is so scary about it? You know, and that's what it is. It's fear, right? It's it's really fear. Fear of abandonment, being left behind, not being accepted or sense of belonging, right? A fear of loss, whether it's actual death or loss of people, relationships, work, health, um, tangible stuff like a house, your livelihood. Um, there's fear of being exposed, right? This is where the secrets come out, you know, whatever is hidden, the things that we either don't want other people to see or, or know about us, right? The sense of our dirty laundry, fear of not being blank enough, not being smart enough, thin enough, uh, well-known enough, or, um, uh, creative enough, uh, good enough, whatever enough, right? The, a lot of insecurities, right? It, it brings up a lot of insecurities. And, um, you know, it's not just the hurts and pains in terms of our dark side, but it's also just behavioral patterns, right? Because all of these fears or, or voids that, you know, these fears turn, there's like a, a connection to a void or a lack of. And so what do we do? We try to fill it up with stuff, right? And that's where those unhealthy behaviors might come out, you know, when we go to one extreme of it, right? And so we're talking about addictions. We're talking about um, masks that we wear, things to cover up or, or full, like where we do too much of something to try to fill in that void. Like if we're fear of abandonment, then, you know, we're going to give, 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 give with hopes that this other being relationship situation doesn't leave us, right? Like, like I think of work and I think of how much I overgave, right? to show my worth, to show my commitment, right? Of like, I won't get fired because of how much I give. And, and um, even in family too, the sense of like, over giving, ple yes pleasing, right? And, and for fear of I don't know, I guess it was loss or, or worth. I don't know. But I just was just thinking about, okay, you know, we don't, people don't talk about addiction a lot, right? They don't, or addictive quality type of behavior, addictive type of behaviors, at-risk behaviors. But we all kind of have them to some degree, whether it's in the positive sense where we're yes, please, you know, Yes, 
uh, what is it, where we're constantly saying yes <laughs> to things, right? Where it's more of an acceptable extreme of an addiction where we're, we're always saying yes to things without putting boundaries. Or the other extreme where it's, you know, overindulgences, right? Where we're overeating or, um, you know, there's issues with gambling and money or hoarding or, um, you know, drinking, you know, food, porn, uh, purchasing things, right? Purses, makeup, shoes, um, or, or the sense of being too righteous, right? Um, trying to save too many people, right? I mean, there's extremes of these types of tendencies, addictive tendencies, addictive type of behaviors that we engage in to cover up. And sometimes we don't want to look at that, right? We can easily pick it up on someone else, but to look at it within yourself, that's hard to do. And so I was just reflecting on, you know, my situation, the fact that I was sexually molested and I completely forgot about that. And this voice, right? This lack of a voice that I had growing up. And I remember with that experience, there was a part of me that sought it, that I, I looked for it because of the attention that I was getting. And then until there was a point where I'm like, I don't, this, it just doesn't feel right anymore. Like once I learned, right? Cause I was, I was young when it happened and I, initially I just remember oh wow it must be special right I must because that's what I was led to believe that I'm like I'm being I'm special right I, I have this special attention and and now and then it shifted and I remember when it shifted and and in retrospect in my relationships with others like I, sex was an issue for me, right? There, there was this this need where I felt like that's how I felt loved, almost wanted, desired. And I've always had issues with food, with my weight, you know, yo-yoing. And, and I remember thinking, I just want a good relationship with food. <laughs> I remember thinking that to myself. Um... There was a point where it's drinking was, I used it more as a way to like relax and, and be more open. But it, I mean, none of this ever really got to a point where it was, where I was paying for stuff or where it was like, you know, left me bankrupt or, or I mean, did it become issues in relationships? Yeah. And I always had communication issues too. Not speaking up when something didn't sit well. Doing the, the yes, you know, playing the pleasing, trying to please others. And or thinking I needed to save everybody. That without me, they wouldn't be okay. And then I started thinking, well, if this is all part of our dark side, right? How does it look like, you know, in a spiritual sense and in a religious sense, right? I'm Christian, I identify as Christian. Well, I mean, I, I don't know if I still do, I guess. I mean, I, I do, but believe in Christ and... and but just the sinning part, I feel like it's just, I'm looking at sin differently. I, I'm looking at it, you know, what is sin, right? Because again, this, this duality of, of sin 
and then it came up in my daily devotional came up the sense of sin and in, in this particular passage this means you don't have to need to be afraid to face your sins or to deal with them as you become aware of your sin in life confess it so then I'm like confess it well if I don't feel like I had a sin like this idea of confessing like what what is why do why this word confess makes me feel like guilt <laughs> like like there's a, a sense of guilt in confession right I mean we we think of confession in a Catholic sense of like you go to see go to a priest and you confess a sin right and you're supposed to receive forgiveness so I looked up the word confession in this, you know, 1981 <laughs> old school dictionary to confess. And, and it really just, it's to speak, to tell or make known, but yet it's, it's tied into as in something wrong or damaging to oneself or to acknowledge. Like there's a lot of like religious connotations to it really. Um, but it, it really boils down to, to acknowledge, to speak, to own. How one word, you know, how one word really can, 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 shift how we look at things right to confess if if we were to rewrite that and, and and instead of confess we just say we own we make known and we own it make it ours acknowledge it how different i, I wonder what a different message or perspective that would give to people who are really struggling with this concept of shame and guilt you know because there there's I mean I, I took uh, an addictions course in graduate school and and to learn about addiction and, and patterns and, and treatment and, and we were uh, part of our our course was to attend you know AA and a meetings and and I remember going to these meetings and thinking wow like there's so much power in owning it right in, in this group and 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 you know when they speak and share their truth because that's ultimately what they're doing they're speaking their truth there's so much empowerment and and you know where where you don't you no longer fear like it has control over you, but that you can control it, right? Yeah. And then I think, oh gosh, there's so much shame around these types of meetings because it's Alcoholic Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, right? There's so much shame as a culture that we've put on on these types of behaviors that have an ex an intensity of what it looks like something that's more acceptable right when you when you you say yes to everything when you want to save everybody when you want to be a saint you know where you're trying to be self-righteous you know and then there's that other extreme of like you know where where it's like you know, gambling or porn or shoes or makeup hoarding, you know, um, overeating, you know, yeah. It's just owning and acknowledging those parts of yourself that you don't want people to see or yourself to acknowledge. That's all it is.
really. Instead of trying to keep it at bay and not looking at it and not acknowledging it or feeling shame around it, right? Because of what we're led to believe, just acknowledge it as, as part of your truth. And acknowledging it is that first step of being able to do something about it, right? Level of awareness. I mean, even in treatment, I remember talking to some of the clinicians and, and about how these, sometimes these kids are in therapy forever, but then it's like people forget to talk to them about their goals and, and or their parents, you know, sometimes it, it requires a parent's input, involvement, right, because these are kids we're talking about different levels of maturity, different levels of awareness. But then you have some parents that are also struggling, right? Confess. Just to own, really. Once you own it as part of who you are, you can then transform it. That's what the dark side is. Right? That's what it is. And you no longer fear it if it's a part of who you are. You no longer fear it. It's kind of like... Like if you were to look at it as a baby. <laughs> You know, like a baby, you know, this neglected baby, this, <laughs> this baby you don't want to look at, <laughs> this, one of your kids, <laughs> you're just like, oh my goodness, here we go again, right? <laughs> the kid's always going to be a part of you. <laughs> it's how you look at it. It's your perception of it, right? <laughs> and, and you look at your child and... and Okay, I love you for who you are, right? You drive me crazy, you drive me up the wall. I'm embarrassed when I'm in public with you sometimes when you throw your tantrums. And, and you just, you love it, right? You're like, I, I have to love you <laughs> for who you are. And, you know, we're gonna work together on this and, and transform you, you know, into, into something. You know, or, or, or not even, it, it's just owning it and, and, you know, taking that first step without a fear. Yeah, it's just, it's been this constant, it, it's been in my heart and it's been in my mind all week, since last week actually. And, um, Christina Lopes then, you know, she put out a video on um fear so i'll link that i'll put that in the link too and, and you know it, the weird thing is too it's just as i'm as i'm doing my own right research and looking into things i'm coming across information of things i've never even heard of right um like this Chiron stuff. There's this thing called a Chi or I don't. It's a person, I think. Chiron. So on your birth chart, you have a Chiron. There's like some Chiron planet stuff, <laughs> or or I don't know what it is, but it. So your Chiron. Chiron is, is considered a wounded warrior. So this is like the wound that you come to earth with, right? Um, that you have to heal, that you have to learn to heal. And, and with that, you're able to help others. I don't know what that, what mine is. I mean, I have a list <laughs> of things I needed to heal. So I'm sure it's one of those, but, um, 
yeah, I, I have to look into that a little more. Because I came across that and then I came across another, something else that sounded the same, but it was spelled a little bit differently. But anyways, as I was listening to it, I'm, I'm, it was a video and it was like actually a book, a book on YouTube. So I was listening to it, the audio version, and it was crazy because it was acknowledging information that I always like I had it I had it in here so it was like this validation of what I already knew without having known about Chiron or, or just these things that I mean no one ever really told me about him growing up like it was just something I always knew and, and then hearing it in this audiobook which I'll also put a link to like it it validated a lot of like I believe that like I don't know where I believe that from. Like I just, that was something I always knew. And and it talks about like duality and balance and you know, all roads lead to, like these beliefs that I kind of already instinctively knew. And, and, and this is the first time that I'm hearing about it in some type of book teaching type of thing. It's crazy. Like I think because I'm just like, I know my, my parents never taught me any of this, right? In, in this in this manner. So I'm still learning and learning to discern, right? What sits right, what sits well, and, and what doesn't. It's a process. That was all. The dark side again. All right, you guys have a good night. Bye. Hi, my name is Yubi, and in case you haven't figured it out, this footage is capturing my experience as I learn to navigate my personal spiritual awakening. Um, I am learning that this experience is unique to each one of us. Um, in whatever way we believe we are embracing living our truth, this just happens to be my journey. Um, and despite me having a graduate degree and a license in clinical social work, this by no means is intended to replace any type of mental health advice. This is just me on a personal level, uh, documenting my experience, shedding light on the truth that I am learning and discovering for myself, um, and really inviting you along for the ride. Um, if by some <laughs> magical chance you find this content to be helpful in any way, shape, or form, please click the like button, you know, share the message, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have an Instagram account, a personal one, and one specifically for this channel that you're more than welcome to check out. Um, I'm an open book. Um, I have also created t-shirt um, t-shirt designs. I'm wearing my favorite one right now, which is the North Node um, uh, design, um, but I have that and other things uh, that you can look at um, inspired by this process and journey, um, and I have the link in the description box as well as in the about section of my YouTube um, channel. So you're more than welcome to check those items out. Um, any type of support is, you know, Right. <laughs> um, again, if, if you find this content really helpful or meaningful, sometimes when we um, take that step and, and, and be vulnerable, you know, with, with showing what's inside our hearts and what's really our truth, we realize that we're much more connected um, than, than what we thought we were. And so um, I hope that um, as I'm living this experience it, and that you find some type of truth for yourself or, or find some type of um, ability to heal in some way just by relating, you know, just just by knowing that you're not alone. That really has been my goal with, with this process, um, not just um, being able to connect with others, but really for my own healing. Um, it's definitely been a therapeutic experience and a very creative one for, for myself. So I thank you and um, I wish you all the best and, you know, we'll see what else um, comes next for me.